CGI has gotten so accessible, it's become very easy to throw together a quick, interesting scene with almost zero modeling involved, um, just by using high-quality photo-scanned objects uh, that are, by the way, freely available because of amazing companies like Quixel. All you need is a rudimentary understanding of the software and, and some basic lighting and compositional techniques to make something look pretty cinematic. So right here, I'm just figuring out what sort of a composition looks nice. I didn't really have any reference in mind for this, I just sort of placed these photo scans and arranged them in a way that would fill up the frame in an interesting way. Uh, duplicating existing assets and just rotating them can do wonders. What I decided to do next is to add some camera shakes. I guess I wanted to go for a more realistic feel, but also I think adding handheld camera motion added to the whole seasickness vibe of the finished video. So here I'm just generating random noise, which is just floating point values between 0 and 1, and um, I'm telling them to affect the X, Y, and Z positions of my virtual camera. And since they're arbitrary, they do a good job of faking handheld videography. We're using EV to work in and render this entire project, and since EV uses a technique called rasterization to minimize render times and keep your viewport smooth, it's not actually calculating light in your scenes. So we have to ensure we turn on our fake ambient occlusion and screen space reflections. Simply put, ambient occlusion is just the shadows that objects cast when they're really close to each other, and screen space reflection is essentially just how an object will reflect another object um, on itself, depending on how rough it is. Uh, this will help us later when we decide to add water to the scene. Using 360 images to light your scene has become pretty popular in 3D to get nice looking lighting in an instant, but of course, um, selecting the right kind of HDRI image is key to determine the mood of your scene. Now because I had no particular concept in mind when I started this project, you can see me cycling through the different HDRI options to find one that suits. A nice place to find free high quality HDRIs is HDRI Haven, but I ended up picking a 360 image of the ocean from a website called Envato Tuts. I oftentimes find myself combining the HDRI lighting with manually placed lights to my liking. In this case, I've added a sun lamp in the same direction as the light from the HDRI just to accentuate the amount of light hitting my rocks and to flesh out their details. Um, this main sort of subject rock in front of the camera is pretty high poly and is actually slowing down the entire project, but I wanted to keep it as detailed as possible because it's um, so close to the camera. Um, and so adding this extra light to show off its details definitely pays off in the final render. What I'm doing next is adding some volumetric to my scene to give it some much needed ambience. At this point, I've sort of decided to really lean in on the whole cave idea, and uh, I brought in another photo scanned asset and just tilted uh, them around, uh, duplicating them and tilting them around uh, within my camera's frame to give the illusion of a cave. It might not be scientifically accurate, and these rocks might not even form together this way, but we're just taking some creative liberty here. I've decided to add water to my scene, like it's a cave in the middle of an ocean. Again, we're not trying to be scientifically accurate as to how these things would actually form and exist in real life, but we're going for believability and not realism with this project. A lot of people would fuss around with water simulations for a project like this, but me being a Mac user, I can't deal with such heavy tasks like that. So I just used a high quality water texture, um, and I made sure to choose one with a lot of water foaming, because that's going to help us give the illusion of the water hitting our rocks and foaming. Of course it falls apart if you look closely, but we'll make sure to frame the video in a way where the viewer isn't immediately distracted by the fake, almost plastic like water we're doing. Again, this is all in the name of keeping things simple and manageable to render. I'm a fan of generating noise to control the density of the fog in my scenes at random, much like we did for our handheld camera effect. So instead of everything being uniform, we've procedurally used the noise to drive the volume's density, and it just makes for a more interesting, dare I say, more realistic scene. And now that we have water in our scene, I decided to add fake wetness to the rocks, especially to their sides where the water would be hitting them. It's a very subtle effect in the final render, but one that I think uh, really helps to subconsciously sell the fake water effect.
Although the rocks are sort of the centerpiece in this render, we need something interesting off in the distance to create depth and suggest a world beyond the world we just see in the frame. I've decided to use some peaking mountains off in the distance for some texture, and because they're going to be so far off in the distance and out of focus, we don't even need to bother using a 3D model for this. I oftentimes find myself using 2D images for a lot of things like clouds, trees, and even buildings, and as long as there isn't much shift in the parallax of the camera, no one ever notices. I also decided to change the colors of the rocks to better suit the mood of the scene. From here it was just a matter of rendering the animation out and bringing it into my editing software for some minor color correction. I like the idea of adding some dust and water overlays whenever I can, it sort of helps to glue the footage together, and in our case since the camera takes the perspective of someone or a boat drifting into the cave, there's a high chance we might see droplets on the camera itself. So I found some footage of water droplets on a window pane and overlaid them onto our scene. This could be seen as distracting, but in our case, since our ocean isn't a realistic fluid simulation with actual droplets hitting our rocks, I felt adding real water droplets to our camera gave it this dynamic realism which we wouldn't have otherwise gotten. And that's pretty much it. Here's the finished scene again. This sort of workflow focuses on creating rather than getting bogged down with technicalities that often hinder creativity. Using basic principles and amazing photo scans like the ones we just saw, you can create worlds we've never seen before. I hope this helped and thank you for watching.